Today we're doing a review of my Noveski, built by the unbelievably talented Dave Barry. And here it is. This is my Noveski. It's an M4 variant and every part of this has been custom built to within an inch of its life. This video is going to be in two parts. The first part is um, basically we're going to look at the internals of this particular piece. And the second part is we're going to look at all the externals because they're the wow factor for me. So we're going to get into this video. You'll have to bear with me. Um, I've been asked to do this video for a good while and as you probably can see by my demeanor I'm, 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 I'm actually getting a bit tongue-tied because I don't know how to go about it. The biggest problem I have is this year um, Dave passed away and you know it's always a hard one to talk about. I, I, I'm not going to lie I didn't know Dave particularly well. He was a friend on the airsoft field and he was someone he, I, I was beginning to hang out with a bit but he's been really, really sorely missed. And um, Dave and I had sat down and discussed the uh, projects of making a few more gun tech videos because Dave was, um, without a doubt, Ireland's finest gun builder. He, he really was anally perfect in everything he did with the guns, down to the internals, the externals. He just didn't miss a, a trick or a heartbeat in creating something special. So today we're going to have a look at the internals and you're going to have to bear with me because I'm not a gun tech. I'm kind of guessing a, a, a few bits that he's done. So I have a lot of photographs now that we're going to throw up and I'm going to give you a bit of a talk through of what I know he did to go about uh, what he did. And if I get stuff wrong, you're going to have to just live with it and, you know, be nice to me. So as I say, this is my Dave Barry Noveski. We're going to get into this video on the externals and then the second video in this series will be the externals. So, like every good gun builder, he asked me exactly what I was looking for in my gun, and then he assembled all the bits that he needed. He got all the externals together, which mainly were going to be Noveski stuff, and then he got all the internals. Now, this is where it's going to get a bit complicated for me, because I'm not a gun tech. Most of you guys will know what's what. Like everything, you've got to work neat, you've got to have the right tools to do the job. We used a GMP 9mm casing and um, he gave it a good clean down uh, before he started which is apparently really important um, then he was going to fit the bearings and what he does with the bearings he uses a bit of Loctite to keep them in place and then he pops the bearings in and they should stay fairly good he used a high temperature grease on the bearings so that they would keep nice and smooth um, and then there was just the usual sort of touch up of uh, grease. Now, shimming a, a you know an AEG gearbox is most important, and you know he had all the components for the the uh, gear set that we put in. There are high speed uh, helical gears from Systema, so he did a brilliant shim job on it. And you know, like every shim job, you have to keep checking it and checking it until it's just the exact amount of movement that you want. The piston. He did a bit of a job on as well. He short stroked the piston so that we would get a bit of a faster rate of fire. I think this gun fires around 22 BBs per second on a 9.6. And, you know, like everything, you know, it's one of those things where you've got to just take your time, get it right. He put in the ASCU unit, which is a MOSFET unit on the trigger, and it is a lifesaver which I found out to my cost when my gun shit its uh, gear, which we'll look at the end of the video. Now, here's something. He tampered with the motor. He took it apart and sort of did something with the ball bearings inside and got it so that he was happy with the speed that it was churning out. And then, like everything else, you have to make sure that all your points of contacts are, you know, your wires are, are of a high grade and of the right length and all the connectors are just so. Mm -hmm. Gearbox, it's a nine mil bearing box. Uh, Dave made this, uh, you know, to his own specs. He did a few tweaks on the, the actual, the way he put the uh, gears in and stuff. But basically it's running a set of Systema high speed helical gears and it's uh, basically shit the, the bevel gear. Now, what saved the rest of the gears is the fact that I was using this ASCU MOSFET system and ASGNL 
uh, distribute these for everyone so I really suggest you get one of these they're not that expensive but they make a huge difference to the gun but basically the gun when I started to play with it something went wrong the battery was cut out and this little gizmo started to bleep to tell me that there was an issue um, Chris opened it couldn't find anything we thought it was the ASCU unit initially uh, had gone wallop but it wasn't it was actually the bevel gear and most gears when they shit themselves tend to do it in a certain way but the high speed helical gears are slightly different and this is the piece that that kind of that did it let me just get into focus are we in focus yet right well anyway here's the gear and basically what came off Chris there it shaft. is pop the shaft out the center it pop, popped the shaft on the center so this was basically then spinning but this gear piece here wasn't so this was spinning on its own and, and there it is so I mean it's pretty crappy implementation of a gear set but you know what it's the trade-off that you uh, make when you get the system uh, high-speed helical gears now here's a quick question for you Chris yep. uh, high-speed helical gears what advantage are they over a normal bog standard set of gears because they do seem to be a lot more temperamental uh, than normal sets now at the time when Dave was building me the gun He said I can make it with normal systemic gears yep. or I can do the helicals He recommended the helicals. He said they will be more temperamental. They will fail a lot quicker Yeah, but he said they're much crisper quicker cleaner What well, I don't know there's no backlash. In there's the no backlash in the What, the f what, what the does the backlash teeth? mean? See the way the teeth are cut on an angle. Yeah, when you fire it and it spins Yeah, the gears will stop and then they'll do a little sort of a shaky thing right the helical or the angled teeth it's eliminates all that and they are they are sort of smoother in operation basically i like them i prefer them right they don't uh mm, i don't know they just seem to sound completely different yeah they do yeah, yeah. um a crispier sound yeah and but they do run real smooth as well when you that is a problem with a lot of them especially that one because that shaft is press fit into the, the main gear body and it does just sort of now, crack the splines. Uh, a set of normal gears will set you back how much? Around Roughly, give or take. 30, 40 euro. Right. Dependent. But the helicals are about a hundred quid Easy. a set. Yeah. Yeah. A Easy. minimum. Yep. Yeah. Easy. So they're because they're they're machined rather than cast. Right. So, so you are getting a a higher tolerance yep. piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um Systema aren't the only ones that do that. I've seen Classic Army do that as well. Um, I believe the Classic Army version are better. I.e., well, no, maybe not better is the yeah. wrong word, but they're stronger. They are stronger, yeah, but they do have that failure as well. Right, so it's known yeah. failure point yeah. on the. And that's why you missed it the first time around. When yeah. you opened up the box, you were looking for stripped teeth or something that was more yeah. obvious. And it's only until you had a real poke around that you realised that that was your issue. That the shaft had actually. Yeah. The shaft had, had kind of come off yeah. from the. If you, I don't know whether you can see inside the gear, but the splines are gone completely from in there and are still on the, the shaft itself. Yeah. Right, so the spines are here, yep. but they're not in here. No, it's smooth as... So it just rotated around on itself. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's the problem. Was the problem. So, um, we were really lucky that um, when Dave passed away, a lot of his gear was sort of handed over to uh, his friends and you know they've put it into a little bit of sort of a, a trust fund kind of thing where they it's not even a trust fund is it they just they no. put it in a storage and yeah. they, they, until they know what they're going to do with it yeah. for the family and they were very kind to say to me look we have a spare bevel gear uh, so I want to thank Larry and Carl and uh, uh, Alan, Alan you know for, for, for making it happen they posted it out to me it didn't cost me a penny and that's the thing I like about Airsoft is there's a great sense of unity and friendship out there and uh, I think it's also done a lot of respect for Dave's work that they wanted to see this gun up and running again so we're gonna pop this in now you've already popped it in the gear can you split the gearbox yeah. and let everyone see on video because I have a few pictures of it in on um, actual photographs of it but I actually don't have any pictures of it split open yeah, but the Panzer Crew are fixing it. The Panzer Crew are fixing it, yeah. <laughs> this is the Panzer Crew joke. When initially the box was being worked on by Chris, I rang him and said, how's it looking? Have you found out the problem? He says, well, at the moment, I have the Panzer Crew working on it as we speak. And I said, what do you mean? And he sent me via mobile a picture of these lads working on my gearbox. It was just kind of funny at the time. 
So this is what my gearbox looks like on video. We have the ASCU uh, MOSFET system. It comes in tune. Now you're, you're going to chalk me through this, Chris, because I haven't got a real clue what I'm looking at. Uh, Piston-wise, what have we got here? Do you know what this make is? Or? It's a Systema. Systema piston. Yep. yep. Um, and it looks like, I think it's a Systema cylinder as well. A Systema cylinder. Yeah. Uh, going up to the air nozzle, yeah? Yeah. Right, down here, what have we got? We've got the Systema high-speed yep. helical gears. Yep. So we've got the bevel gear, which is That's the replacement. this one. Yep. And we've got, which one is this, Chris? I don't know. I can't remember that one. <laughs> we always get <laughs> this. Spore gear. Spore gear and sector gear. <laughs> right. And then what's this plate here? That is tapper plate. Tapper plate. And then we've got the wiring in here for the MOSFET which runs down yep. below here. Uh, and ASCU trigger unit. ASCU trigger unit. You don't need to take it out. Well it's out now. So that's you can kind of see the I'll just focus in a bit more on that. Oh system I could offer you one as well. So we have um a close up there now of the actual unit. So after a year of solid using it, besides the bevel gear that went tits up, um, how's it looking? Everything looks fine. Just not much wear, there's no wear on it, there's no wear inside the cylinder. So fairly clean. The only thing is that, just a little bit of wear around the outside of the gear, but normal. That's, that's normal, yeah. 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 Right, well that's that's my Noveski gearbox that Dave made. Um, I have to say, as gearbox goes, I mean, I I, <laughs> I don't know what one what end I'm looking at. I'm not going to lie to you, um, but it does look fairly clean and impressive in there. So yeah. It's not very dirty considering no. it's a year old of playing and it's been played quite a lot. Good. Right, we'll pop the lid back on then, so and. Um, Tell you one thing that Dave did, he brushed on red grease onto yeah. the, the bearing grease. Bearing grease. Yeah. Is that part of the course or is that a Dave uh, special? No, it's a higher temperature grease. Um, if you use normal grease on the bearings, when they're going so fast it heats up and melts and just runs out of the gun. Right. The the red stuff actually stays you can actually still see it in there. Yeah, yeah. It's actually still in the bearings. It is, yeah. So it'll stay there, it won't uh, drip out and run down the side. Yeah. So it stay little all the time. Now, when Dave was making the gun, you can keep putting that together. Yeah. When Dave was making the gun, he said he took the motor yeah. and he and he had a little machine that took off the spindle and yeah. And what was he doing to that? Now, I, I had planned to sit down with Dave and go through all of this with him, and unfortunately that day has come and gone and that will never return. But I'm trying to work out what he did with that. With the motor? The motor. He probably just skimmed the commuter. I think it's called a commuter. Or the shaft. <laughs> right, and what does that do? Um, it just makes it run more efficient. It run, runs quieter and smoother. Like shafts, uh, electric motors, when they put the shaft into them, they're not actually balanced. Right. So skimming, the, skimming it actually balances, so it'll make it run a hell of a lot smoother. Faster. Yeah. Like doing it in RC cars. Because like he tweaked every single bit yep. of this gun, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he, he used to uh, mess around with the motors a lot. He'd pull the shaft from one, fit it into another, and try magnets from one, and bell end off another, and see what end, see what he could do with them. Make his own motor. Yeah. How do you rate the King Arms boxes? I haven't had any problems with them at all. You know, a lot of my own guns have the King Arms casings in them, and I've never had any trouble with them. So the motor here is a Guada Infinite Torque Up motor. It's the long type. And how do you rate that, Chris? Yeah, it's actually pretty good. There's no problems with them. So Chris is saying very good, no problems with them. And in fairness, this isn't a stock motor because this has been stripped and tweaked and re-greased and whatever else Dave did on it. And I can't tell you what he did because, as I say, you know. He's not around to tell us. He wouldn't then, we'd just laugh at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>